Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I wanna go over for you guys out there that are new to using a guillotine tool, some of my most handy dies that I have found useful in my shop um, that I've used over the years. And I'm gonna go over them in basically most used first and then less used as we go on. So thank you for joining us today at Christ Center and Ironworks and uh, glad to have you here. So. Probably the most used set of dies that I actually use in the workshop and I have for the last 14 odd years has been basically these two sets right here. It is a fuller die and a flat die set. And that is, those have been predominantly the main ones I've used with a guillotine tool. Now this guillotine tool that you see here, uh, we actually sell this over at a website, www.blacksmithingblanks.com. I encourage you to go check these out. We sell not only this A-frame guillotine tool uh, kit for 50 bucks, it comes as a kit that you just weld together yourself, but we also sell a C-frame guillotine tool kit like you see here. Again, you just have to weld it up to yourself for $75. So be sure to go check that out. The link will be down in the description down below. But yes, I've had a different guillotine tool that I've used for uh, many, many years now, and these always come back to the most handy die. So first and foremost, the most handy that I've used in principle has been the fullering die sound. Now this is a nice 3 8 inch radius uh, fullering die. Uh, you can make these smaller by welding on little bits of quarter inch, uh, basically quarter inch rod and weld on quarter inch, get different profiles for these. Uh, you can weld on a, a slightly fatter rod as long as it fits between where you're going there, uh, you know, this way, width ways this way. Uh, you can weld on a much bigger diameter rod and do all sorts of other things to have fullers, uh, different sized fullers, uh, to neck down pipe and things like that. And I've certainly shown that in the past here on the channel with a whole bunch of different projects. Uh, the second most used in my shop is a set of flat dies. Now I use the flat dies all the time when I need to get real tight to a shoulder. I've already kind of done some pre-drawed out work on a shoulder for a tenon. Um, and I need to just, you know, square something up real tight that the hammer blows. I take a risk of ruining with the hammer blows. I like using those, uh, you know, using those square flat dies in the actual guillotine tool. It really helps getting up really tight areas and I almost use it as like a, 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 a set hammer set. Uh, because if I don't have help in the shop, it's very nice to do that and I can get up real tight up against shoulders and things like that. So those are probably the two most used in my shop uh, over the last decade plus here that I've been smithing. Now, one that I, I also use quite a bit, although it's less steep of an angle, is a butcher die set. Now I use, now you can cut these at all different angles. This is what is considered a proper butcher. So this is like something that you would use to cut material off, really butcher and segment material completely off from the bar stock. I don't use that one particularly that much, but I use one that is similar that has a much shallower butcher. Uh, angle to it to set off the edges for tenons as well. Um, and, and again, it's really great for isolating masses of material in the center of a bar. Say you want to make a, like a forged collar in the center of a bar, and you want to isolate material to the left and right of it. This is a very handy, handy, handy tool. Now most guillotine tools are really generally used, a lot of people use these for either pipe or they use these for, um, you know, basically forging pipe or necking down tenons because that seems to be the hardest thing. So you will by far use all of these, these three here at some point in making a tenon. They're all kind of part of it. Uh, these are probably the most handiest dies that you would want to make in your shop. If you eat, whether you have a guillotine tool kit already or if you buy one of ours or if you buy from another manufacturer, I recommend picking up these dies. Uh, that, that, those are going to be the most handiest to you out there in the shop. Now last, and this one's last but not least, this is kind of a bit of a specialty die and this could be made a whole host of different ways with all sorts of different sizes. This one here 
is a swedge die or um, basically a tenon die, if you will. It is to make nice round tenons. Now that one, uh, I've shown how to make these in the past. Basically, you're just drilling two holes into a bar and you're cutting it in half, uh, you know, generally, generally speaking. Now what I usually do is I, I dr actually cut the bar in half and then I tack weld it together with a, an electric arc welder, then I drill the holes. That way I get a properly sized tenon and not something that's oval or cat-eyed because if you remove material from a circle, you don't have a circle anymore, you have an ellipse. So I try to take and do that first. So I, I cut the piece, re-tack weld it together, then drill it all the way through uh, both halves, and then that gives me a proper tenon die. This is for rounding up tenons. You can use this for rounding up bar stock or sections that you don't need to be textured. Uh, you can use it in a lot of different applications where you need a swedge, a top and bottom swedge tool. And you can make this in all sorts. You can drill big holes in this. You can have big swedges. You can have smaller ones yet than this for making up little tiny rivets or, or things like that. And, and this is a very, very handy tool to have in the shop. So I can recommend that one, but this one is probably, this you have to know that you want to do tenons and you'll start, you'll go ahead and make one of these when you want to do that uh, because it just makes it oh so much easier to get a tenon nicely, perfectly centered and round uh, like that. But yeah, so those are the dies that I recommend you get, your first dies that you make up. Uh, when, when you actually put together either one of our kits or you buy somebody else's guillotine tool, I, I recommend that you get die stock for your guillotine tool and make up these sets of dies. They are very, very handy to have. Again, you can make all sorts of different, uh, all sorts of different accessories for a guillotine tool. Basically, anything that you can think of that you need a top and a bottom tool for, that's what a guillotine tool is for. You can put that in there and really help aid in your iron work. So that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. God bless each and every last one of you, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.